We're going to spend two video lectures learning about process groups. As you probably gathered thus far in our series, process groups are some of the more, I would say, challenging groups to lead and require the most amount of skill and specialized knowledge. And so we're going to spend more time on process groups when looking at different types of groups. We're also going to look at psychoeducational and support groups in the third video lecture in this module. So let's start out with process groups. The first part in this video lecture, we're going to focus on the here and now and how to facilitate that as a group leader. In our next video lecture, we'll look at what's known as transparency and transference. So let's start out with learning about the here and now. In process groups, the group is the therapy. Your relationship with other group members as the leader is perhaps less important than members' relationships with each other. So the leader should facilitate group process rather than get bogged down in an individual's content. So you, as the group leader, are responsible for facilitating the group and letting the group do the work. On the screen, you see an example of sociogram analysis. And sociogram analysis is particularly important for process groups to determine the role that the leader has in facilitating versus the interactions among members and the better process groups actually involve the leader being less involved and the members more involved. So when you look at this diagram, you'll see the moderator and you'll see different P1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. And what this is really directing us to is understanding that in this model, you see the moderator is too involved in the group because what's happening is that the moderator and the, and the arrows are strength of the connection. In other words, the amount of interaction between people. The moderator uh, has the most interaction with other group members and member to member interaction is much more muted compared to member to leader interaction. So you would expect this from a psychoeducational group, but not from a process group. That would be an ineffective way of running a process group. So let's move then into the here and now and how to engage members in the here and now. I'm going to mention here the difference between content and process. Content pertains to what we consider vertical disclosure. Vertical meaning a person dives deeply into an issue that is of troubling them. Process is about horizontal disclosure. Horizontal disclosure pertains to the members talking about what just happened. It's almost the disclosure about the disclosure. Okay. Another way of thinking about this is the message within a message that people are sending. Okay. So an example of message within a message would be that a person discloses uh, that they have a problem with alcohol use and they do so in the 10th session and the message within the message could be, I trust you now enough to disclose this important secret. So there are two phases of the here and now. The first phase is known as the activation phase. The second is process illumination. Let's talk about activation first. In the activation phase, we pay attention to the present moment happenings of the group. And then we steer dialogue to re relationships with one another. So for example, you'd ask group members to share how you felt when another group member shared something. Uh, or connect members. You would say, you know, when John shared this, it reminded me of something Sally shared earlier on in the group. Okay. Process illumination is where basically you pause the action of the group and the group examines itself and studies its own interactions. So in other words, the uh, the activation phase, phase of here and now evokes affect, right? It evokes this kind of interpersonal emotional self-disclosure. Whereas the second evokes cognitive self-reflection and insight, where we start thinking as group members about what's happening in the group and what do we notice. We start analyzing. Now, members can initiate the first phase, right? They can give more here and now feedback to members but only the leader 
can initiate the second phase of process illumination because if members do this, it puts them in a power position which will alienate them from their peers. Imagine that a member says, okay, let's stop the action everyone and let's look at what just happened. Group members may be actually quite frustrated with that and may give feedback to that person of, hey, who are you to engage us in this process? Okay. So as the group leader, you are responsible for process illumination and no member is going to do it for you. Now, how do we activate the here and now? What are some skills that help? First, as the group leader, we listen more to member behavior than to verbal content. So we're interested in not just the nonverbal movements that a person displays, but for example, when are they saying certain things? Okay, why is this topic being discussed and why now? Uh, why are they telling the group this? And you ask, by the way, yourself a very similar question in individual therapy to help get on top of the data. In other words, to understand the relevance of why someone is telling you something. You ask, why are they telling me this and why now? Other questions can include that, that will help you uh, to, uh, uh, to get to the here and now, okay, to activate it. How and why was the message delivered? What was the timing of it? The phrasing, the tone, the pitch? Was it direct or indirect? Other things that can help with activating the here and now is attending to the unsaid and to omissions, topics, non-confrontations that are happening in the group. What is not happening, basically? The, also, the behavior of a group when a member is absent, that can be helpful. In order to activate the here and now, we do have to interrupt there and then dialogue. We have to interrupt just vertical disclosure about an issue that a member is experiencing. And this can be a bit of a challenge if the group is invested in their member's topic. To do this, you would present it as a dilemma, right? I really want to hear more about this from Joan, but at the same time, I want us to be able to look at how we are discussing this and what we are not discussing and what we notice about the last five minutes of group. Yalom is a big fan of process notes. He likes the idea of writing up a summary and mailing it to members. There are some major benefits to this. I myself have never used this, mostly because all of the groups I have run have been in school or inpatient settings where really there's no need for process notes. In an outpatient basis, if we provide process notes, it updates an absent member um, who has been talked about. It also can help integrate new members because they can read the last six, for, for example, of your process notes and have a good sense of what the group is working on. It also can intensify the next session because members will have read it, will have reflected on it and are ready for the work when they uh, arrive at their next session. So that concludes this video lecture on the first part of learning about process groups and learning about how to use the here and now in a process group situation.